It's no secret that no US-based airline has ever placed an order for the Airbus A380. With its production coming to an end next year, the opportunity to do so has officially passed. But why was the A380 such a tough sell in the United States? What does this reveal about the challenges the aircraft faced? And what lessons can we learn from its limited success in certain markets? Let's dive in and explore the story behind one of aviation's biggest missed opportunities in the US. In June 2024, Airbus delivered the final A380 to Emirates, marking the end of an era for the world's largest passenger aircraft. This historic event symbolized the conclusion of the production for one of the most ambitious aircraft programs in history. Despite its revolutionary design, the A380 faced numerous challenges, particularly in markets like the United States, where not a single airline ever operated the plane. For the biggest airlines in the world, such as American Airlines, the A380 was simply too large and impractical for their operations. The A380's size, coupled with its operational costs, proved to be a challenge that many airlines couldn't overcome. In fact, back in 2019, Vasu Raya, American Airlines' then Vice President of Network Planning, made it clear that the Boeing 777-300 is the biggest size airplane that fits into our network. For American Airlines, the A380 was just too big to integrate effectively into its fleet. The 777-300ER, which American uses on many of its long-haul routes, seats around 304 passengers. In comparison, Emirates' high-density A380 configurations can seat nearly twice that number, and even the lower-density versions of the A380 seat over 165 more passengers than the 777-300ER. This stark contrast in capacity highlights why American Airlines, along with other US carriers, found the A380 too large for their needs. The size of the A380 posed a significant problem for US Airlines, but this wasn't a unique issue to American Airlines alone. Delta and United Airlines, two other major US carriers, also deemed the A380 too large for their operations. The US market simply didn't have the kind of high-demand, high-traffic routes that were necessary to fill such a massive plane consistently. Many international airlines that operate the A380, such as Emirates, British Airways and Qantas, rely on flying between major global hubs where demand is concentrated. Emirates, for example, has taken advantage of its strategic location in Dubai to act as a central hub, connecting passengers from across the globe. By funneling a large number of travelers through one central location, the A380 is an excellent fit for Emirates' hub-and-spoke model. However, the United States is different. Unlike countries where international traffic is concentrated at one or two major airports, the US has numerous key hubs. Cities like New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Chicago, and Dallas all serve as major international gateways, but no single city dominates the market. This decentralized structure makes it difficult for US airlines to funnel enough passengers through one hub to fill the A380 on a regular basis. Timing was another significant factor that worked against the A380 in the US. When the A380 first entered service in 2007, the aviation industry was already shifting its focus toward fuel efficiency. Rising fuel prices in the mid-2000s made airlines more conscious of their operating costs, and four-engine jets like the A380 were seen as too expensive to operate compared to smaller twin-engine aircraft. By 2007, the cost of jet fuel had risen to around $4 per gallon, which made the A380 a costly option for airlines looking to cut costs. At the same time, Boeing had developed more fuel-efficient aircraft, like the 777 and the newer 787 Dreamliner. These planes, with their twin-engine designs, offered airlines a more economical way to operate long-haul routes without the high fuel consumption of larger four-engine aircraft. Between 2000 and 2007, Boeing sold nearly 600 of its 777 jets, with many of these going to US airlines such as American and United. By the time the A380 entered the market, US carriers had already invested heavily in Boeing's more fuel-efficient models, which were better suited to their needs. One of the fundamental reasons US airlines avoided the A380 is tied to their preference for a point-to-point -point route structure rather than a hub-and-spoke model. The hub-and-spoke system, favored by airlines like Emirates, British Airways, and Qatar Airways, involves routing passengers through one or two central hubs before connecting them to their final destination. The A380 is ideally suited for this kind of operation, 
as it can carry large numbers of passengers between major hubs like London, Dubai, and Singapore. However, US airlines have long favored a point-to-point -point network where passengers fly directly between cities without needing to connect through a central hub. This kind of network requires smaller, more flexible planes that can efficiently serve a broader range of destinations. The A380, with its high capacity and need for high traffic routes, didn't fit into this point-to-point -point model. Instead, US carriers opted for smaller twin-engine aircraft, like the Boeing 787, which could operate on both long and short routes with better fuel efficiency. The flexibility and versatility of these planes made them a better fit for the diverse needs of US airlines, who didn't see the value in investing in the A380's massive capacity and high operating costs. As the aviation industry continues to prioritize fuel efficiency and operational flexibility, the future of the A380 looks increasingly uncertain. Many airlines that once embraced the A380 have already begun phasing it out of their fleets. Air France retired its entire A380 fleet in 2020, citing high operating costs and the availability of more efficient aircraft. Lufthansa, another European operator of the A380, has also scaled back its use of the plane. Even Emirates, the largest operator of the A380, has acknowledged that the aircraft's days are numbered. Although Emirates plans to keep flying the A380 into the 2030s, the airline has shifted much of its future investment towards smaller, more efficient planes like the Airbus A350 and Boeing 787. In the United States, the A380 never even had the chance to prove itself. From the outset, US airlines saw the plane as too large, too expensive, and too inefficient for their network needs. As the aviation industry continues to evolve, with a growing focus on sustainability, fuel efficiency, and reducing operating costs, the A380's time in the spotlight seems to be drawing to a close. The Airbus A380 will undoubtedly be remembered as an iconic aircraft that revolutionized the concept of long-haul air travel. With its double-deck design and ability to carry hundreds of passengers, it was a bold attempt to reshape the future of aviation. However, the A380's size, cost, and lack of flexibility meant that it never found a place with US airlines. Instead, American, Delta, and United all focused on smaller, more efficient aircraft like the Boeing 777 and 787, which were better suited to the point-to-point -point route structures and operational needs of the US market. Now that the last A380 has been delivered, the aviation industry is moving forward. With a focus on more flexible, fuel-efficient planes, while the A380 will continue to fly for years to come, its days as the flagship of commercial aviation are coming to an end. Do you think there was ever a chance for a US airline to make the A380 work? Or was it always destined to be too big for the US market? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.